Paperboy started out as an arcade game from 1985, but the edition that I first played was on the NES, first released in 1988. As a kid, this was a pretty hard game, which makes sense since it was made to eat quarters faster than that damn skateboarder comes flying at me. Having played it again as an adult, I managed to get further along, but not without the same challenges that plagued me as a young tot. I came into this remembering the gameplay loop is pretty repetitive, but that's the point. You just have to keep dying and getting better and better. It's pretty fun, too. Things will come flying at you more often the deeper into the week you go, upping each level's progression of difficulty. As Twitch viewer Ha of Flawley pointed out, there's also a varying difficulty based on how many houses you have to deliver to. If you don't deliver to all your subscriber houses in a day, you lose subscribers. You can only get them back by making perfect deliveries to all subscribers. The controls were actually pretty responsive, which is good because I had to really thread some needles on Thursday. Speaking of threading needles, that's extremely impressive on the NES edition of Paperboy because the hitboxes are so janky. It was really hard to tell if I was clear of obstacles or not, even when I had plenty of time to avoid. Overall, I give Paperboy's gameplay a 6 out of 10. For a game that's this fast-paced, it's good that the colors are on the brighter side, but also nothing is muddled or hidden. You will see obstacles getting in your way, so you have no excuse. As a downgraded version of an arcade game, the visuals still did a good job of being appealing. An isometric game this early in the NES cycle is quite impressive. The animations are funny and read exactly how they should. As Twitch viewer French Kitty pointed out, the paper boy looked like he just melted when he got hit. And now that's all I see. I just wish the hitboxes were more visual. I give the graphics of paper boy an eight out of 10. The soundtrack of this game is super limited, with one main track and one end of level training course at the end of a level, even though it should be at the beginning of the level, but hey, whatever track. The main song keeps playing in a repetitive loop that you would think would get annoying after a while, and it might for some, but for me, somehow it was not grating, and just allowed me to focus on the gameplay without it being boring with no music at all. The sound effects are surprisingly crisp and clear non-chip sounds, like they took real audio and compressed it down. Crashing the Paperboy sounded legit. I give Paperboy's music and sound an impressive 8 out of 10. Obviously as a kid, you sometimes ended up with a toy or a video game that your parents thought you wanted. I didn't want Paperboy. I had no idea what it was. That said, it somehow found its way into my regular rotation. There was something about the challenge that kept me coming back, even though I was terrible at it. As I played this game recently, I was reminded of when I would sit in my childhood TV room with my mom cooking in the background. I would even play with my little sister occasionally. Paperboy takes me back enough to give it a nostalgia hit of 7 out of 10. Paperboy was a simplistic but fun game that kept me coming back. It's aged pretty well for the era it was made in, and I would say it's a quick pickup worth some of your time.